shocking year as far as contender applications go. This year we had over 23,000 applications, but of course only 32 can qualify. From those 32, we have to find two champions. What will they get for their hard work? Well, they will both receive one of these top-of-the-range sporting cabriolets and £1,000. Our runners-up will each receive a dream holiday on the paradise island of the Comores, which is just off the coast of South Africa. So let's crack on with the show. Let's meet tonight's female contenders. They are Joe Newman and Zoe Kennedy. From. I'm a detective by the Miss Smithson Police Force uh, and I'm a local girl born and bred in Birmingham. Oh, local girl, bit of support there. So, um, are you excited about being on Gladiators? Yes, very. Yeah. What sort of things do you like to do to keep fit? Uh, cross training, which involves weight training and using all the apparatus in the gym. And I've recently qualified as an aerobics instructor as well, so I'm just... Well, congratulations. Well, let's hope you do equally well tonight. Let's hear it for Joe Newman. So, tell me a little bit about where you come from and what you do. I come from Prestatyn in North Wales. What do you do as a job? Um, I manage a gym in Rail in North Wales near my hometown. I'm also a fitness instructor, so I teach lots of aerobics classes as well. Do you have any pastimes? I go mountain biking with my a trainer, Martin, who's helped me get through to Gladiators. Running up and down the sand dunes. I believe you play a little bit of rugby as well. Yeah, with the rugby girls! Yeah. Well, I think you might need your skills in the Powerball this evening, but let's give it up for Zoe! So, while the girls go off and prepare for their first event, let's meet the guys tonight. They are Andy Whitehouse and Anthony Nesbitt! Pits. Yeah, I used to work down at Pitts. <laughs> I bet that wasn't particularly pleasant, was it? No, it was a bit dirty, but I enjoyed it. Good atmosphere, good lads to work with. But um, did you keep fit throughout all this time? Because obviously you're a very, very fit person. Yeah, I looked after myself after work, you know, after shift work and all that. So I keep going. So what do you do now and where are you from? I'm from Harworth in Doncaster. <laughs> and uh, I've got a little garage, I'm um, a self-employed mechanic. Now, you and I have been having a bit of a tough time, haven't we? Yeah. Because um, well, tell us our problem. We've missed us kids, haven't we? That's yeah, yeah. Chloe and Lydia, I love you. Ah, oh, that's sweet. Well, you've and got Julie. To, you've got to stay strong and be good. You're looking forward to tonight? Yeah, excellent. I can't wait. Well, off you go and prepare for your first event. Let's hear it for Andy Whitehouse. Tony, you look very relaxed as you came down there to, uh, to, towards me. Are you used to big crowds? Yep, I'm a dancer, I travel all over the world dancing, so... Have you danced with anybody famous? Yeah, uh, I've done the George Michael video, Fast Love, so that was a good thing for me, good experience. Tell us uh, where you come from and what you do. Well, I'm a scaffolder by trade and I come from London, West London. So you've got a posse in the house tonight? Yeah, I've got a posse here, a posse here, they're rearing up. Have you got any nicknames? Yeah, I've got a street name called King B. And that's, um, that stands for the street name years ago in the breakdancing, I was called King Breaker, because I was king of the floor. Well, we'll see if you're going to be king tonight at Gladiators. Let's hear it for Tony! Well, the girls are now ready for their first event, so let the games begin. <laughs> In the yo atmosphere is Zoe! In the orange atmosphere is Joe! And they'll be facing Falcon! And Fox! Smoke! 
Rock and roll time for the heavy metal brigade. Joe Newman, the detective constable, sets off in pursuit of the points, but a progress is about to be arrested by the big clash. Well, biggish. Zoe Kennedy and Yellow breaking free for pod two. A square to smoke signal, three points. Joe's got the wobbles on three. Can she middle it? Oh, very nasty. You've heard of the smoke kipper? Well, there's a the smoke copper. Three points on the license and back into action. The Glad's trying to get a purchase on these two contenders at the moment. Zoe having a ball, but that cagey bird of prey falcon is there. And Joe with some space for points on four, but the fox is on the hunt. Denies her the score, the fox brushes her away. So he heads ahead with Falcon. In fact, both girls now look to be tamed by the Glad. 60 seconds to score what they can, but time's running down. Joe heaving her atmosphere into a go mode. Gets it running for an attack on pod one. She's there. Can she plant it? Oh, no centre, no smoke, no score. So he's stuck in the outback of no man's land. And that's about it. Joe came close a couple of times. There was plenty of wobble and bobble, but couldn't middle her other chances. Zoe, the aerobics teacher from Prestatin, managed to press that in and open her account very early doors. Zoe, that seemed incredibly difficult to move the atmosphere. Hey, it's so hard, that game. Never, ever by anyone a hamster. <laughs> well, you'll be pleased to know you scored three points. Joe, it was a very, very promising start in the middle there. Yeah, I was sort of, I was waiting for it to come to me. I don't know who's, I don't know who was slowest, but uh, a, near, a few near misses, unfortunately. Yes, there were, but I mean, you did score three points at the very beginning. Are you pleased with that? Yeah. <laughs> well done, plenty more events. Let's hear it for Joe. Nice helmet, good solid start from the girls. After one event, the scores stand at three apiece. Now it's the turn of the boys. In the yellow atmosphere is Tony! In the orange atmosphere is Andy! They'll be facing Cobra! And Saracen! Over to John Anderson. The an ex-miner, dare I say, he's used to digging deep. Tony, a scaffolder and dancer, a combination of poles and pirouettes, rolls into action, gets a swipe from Cobra for his trouble. Andy careers into the carnage and breaks free. He's looking for a piece of pot one. Better look lively, the Saracen's gonna be there to scare him off, switch his direction. And Tony, looking to dance up some smoke on pot three, fails to control it. Andy pitting his wits against Saracen, and Saracen pushes him wide. John Anderson moaning about something. We'll try and get a translation for you later. Cobra leading Tony a merry dance, marking him completely out of the point. And Andy being knocked from pillar to post by Saracen. Tony can't get a look in on pod three. Gladiators have done a magnificent job completely closing these contenders down. Andy trying to put something together, but more in hope than expectation. Cobra and Saracen have been doing this for six seasons now, so they're more or less got the hang of what they're doing now. Andy used to a cage to take him down to the cold face, but this is not the minor role he was hoping for in atmospheres. The whistle ends the agony. Great work by the Gladiators. Andy with points missing from his score and a wine missing from his name. Well, Andy, I have to say that... Uh... Sarah did a hell of a job. Oh, excellent. You're on my tree all the way there, shaking it. Couldn't shake him off. Big guy. That's off to him. Couldn't Absolutely. Couldn't... Everywhere Brilliant. you went, he just had you marked. Oh, I couldn't get away from him. No way. No points on this occasion. Well, look, here. try next game. That's what we like to hear. Let's hear it for Andy. <laughs> Tony, uh, a lot of rolling, but not a lot of scoring. I oh, know, me, um, me pad come off and... That was it. I had no leverage and I slipped my hand and everything. OK, good luck with the next event. Let's hear it for Tony! And Tony blaming his pads while Andy's praising the glads. After one event, the scores remain nil-nil. Morning, gang. Cycling this morning. You're going out for two hours now on the bike, but remember, this is a very hot and very humid climate, 
so plenty of fluid intake is necessary, and I'm glad to see you've all got the water bottles on the bike. So you ready? Three, two, one, and away you go. Oi, Wolf, hold it. Rule number one on a bike, especially where you're concerned, never set off unless you're wearing your helmet. Oh, I see, in case I fall off and crack my head in the pavement. No, in case you crack the pavement with your head. Sounds reasonable. Pendulum, it's Jo! And she's going to be swinging it out against Rebel! Over to John Anson. Contender! Starts his merciless swing. Joe has to keep on the spear and out of trouble for 60 seconds to score 10. But look at Rebel! Straight on the detective's case. The Rebel is a real bell of the ball. Oh, my goodness. So close to a record-breaking flag snatch. But Joe cops 10 points as Joe bails herself out. Let's see it again. Rebel, so fast on the spear, tries a flash and grab raid, but she's out of there. So it was meant to be over for you so quickly, and you were very lucky, picking up 10 points. Excellent. <laughs> Those, I was hoping we might have a little cops and robbers chase up there, but she, you didn't get very far. No, she came round quick though. I was worried, but um, but not for very long. <laughs> Let's hear it for Joe and for Rebel. Well done. Okay. I lost that one. I'm gonna cry. What's that? Oh, popcorn. Lovely. Go on, give us a bit. Oh, all right then. Well, give us a wave. Nice. Next up on the pendulum, it's Zoe. She's going to be facing lightning. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! Ready to go! While John Anderson's going through all that malarkey, let's look at the stats. The aerobics instructor from the valley shapes up well. There's lovely, and here's lovely too. The striking lightning stands two centimetres shorter than Zoe and three kilos three, lighter. Two! And there'll be five points for Zoe if she hangs around for 40 seconds and 10 for the full minutes. Lightning there showing us why she's so popular. Her skill in every possible event is second to none. Lightning coping with a swing fabulously well, scooting round at incredible speed. Mum Moira and boyfriend Chris screening instructions. Mum's legs have given out, but Zoe's haven't. Managing to escape the lightning for the moment. The danger is briefly passed, but lightning is relentless. So we ought to think about heading south to maximize the difficulty for lightning. That's what she's doing. But lightning hovering over her like a specter of impending doom. Zoe looks good to score five, but lightning getting ready to strike again. The flags fluttering in the breeze. Can lightning take it? Zoe's got to be on borrowed time. The lightning doesn't get this close and throw it away. The yellow flag is there for the taking. Oh, and she takes it. Good pendulum performance from lightning. Gets the job done. But the banners are out for Zoe. Well, the finish was faultless, as you'd expect. Zoe couldn't escape the Lightning's clutches, and she was flagged down. After two events, Joe moves up to 13 points, and Zoe goes on to eight. We now move into the men's event with Andy. He's going to be facing Hunter. Over to John Anderson. Contender! He's really up for this. Here's what he told me earlier. I think I've just got the right type of attitude to be a contender because no matter what I've had a go in life, I've always given 110%. And if I succeed, it's a bonus. If I don't succeed, it's a knock on chin, a slap on back and get on with it. Same with the games. If I don't make one game a good result, the next game I'll make sure I get a result and make my goal. with exactly the right attitude for gladiators. And now he needs to get the right altitude because Hunter's going to be coming over that hill any second now. 
daughters Chloe and Lydia giving him what for. Doncaster based Andy, a real Yorkshire Terrier when he was training, grits his teeth and gets on with it, never makes a fuss, and keeping Hunter at more than arm's length at the moment. Hunter closing him down now, and wife Julie well aware of the danger. The Hunter bounding round the ball, and Andy needs to pull something out of the hat before Hunter pulls the flag off his back. Hunter, points to strike. Oh, there goes the flag, and there goes the point. The flag is cast down, and the family downcast. It's the distance Hunter can cover in one stride that makes for Andy's downfall, then it's an easy reach down. Andy, the kids were going bananas. I always keep drawing the short straw for these fast blocks, you know. No, I saw me today. I'm, I'm sure the kids were shouting, Daddy, go this way, go that way, go this way, go that way, and you can't hear a thing. Can't hear, no, no, I just can feel this breathing. Ah, ah. Yeah. And also, of course, um, if you'd stayed on perhaps a little bit longer, you'd have picked up some points, yeah. but I'm afraid you weren't there long enough. No problem. And, um, I don't know what to say. Well done. Thanks very much. Yeah, my mother's been sending me some animal power. So for each event, I've become a different animal, and uh, I was a bit of a cheater there. Pretty quick. Right. Well, on that note, I think we'll leave it. That's it for Hunter and for um, Andy. Nice Next up on the pendulum, it's Tony. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, he's got the wolf man. Well, earlier, Tony had a personal message for Wolfie. This one's for my main man, Wolf. It's time for your P45, Joe. Here we go. <laughs> well, that sold him. Knees Jade and nephew Zach right behind him. Tony sets off to keep out of harm's way. The Wolf, a fine exponent of the art of pendulum power, so he'll be looking for a quick finish. And this action, enough to make your hair curl, it certainly curled Sylvia's. And Wolf looks to have lost the plot. Doesn't know where his man is, which means if Tony can stay hidden for another 20 seconds, he's good for five. And Tony more used to hanging on to scaffolding at this height, but doing well with those ropes. Tony's hanging loose down south, way out of trouble. Wolf has lost the scent completely in an event where he's usually so strong. Tony letting Wolf do all the work, hiding himself away. Wolf so close, yet so far. And Sister Angela doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. Tony scores five. The question is, can he hang on for the ten? And on the Wolf's current performance, I'd have thought the answer was yes. Wolf bothered and bewildered. He'll not be a happy bunny. Tony just hanging around, letting the wolf and the points come to him. Wolf prolonging the agony, but this will not go down as one of his better performances. Ten easy points for very little effort. His fans pleased with that one, especially girlfriend Marias. And here's Tony, down for an in-depth interview. Way to go, Tony. You make me want to sing. conversation with Hunter just earlier and he said that he said that um, he felt he was a cheater up there and I was just wondering what you were what what, what animal you were a, a, a blue tit <laughs> listen this guy's a scaffolder yes and I knew he was gonna be good but I didn't know where he was now that's kind of the object of the game call me old-fashioned anyway let's hear it for Wolf but let's hear it for Tony well done Tony Wolf, you're disqualified. Well, they, they might have spelt you're wrong, but we know what they mean. All the cheerleaders let him have it. At least he's got one fan. The wolf baiting the crowd. If only he'd been this fired up on the pendulum. Got a comment for us, Wolfman? He was lucky, simple as that. Lucky! Same old wolf, same old script. After two events, Andy remains on zero while Tony goes up to ten. Well, Wolf's gone off to work on his eyesight, but still to come, Powerball, Jewel and Hang Tough. So join us after the break for more action here on Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. 
We're now ready for our next event. Scoring with the blue balls is Zoe. And scoring with red balls is Joe. They'll be facing gladiators, Rocket, Siren and Rebel. Over to John Anderson. Contenders ready! Ladies ready! While the girls get ready to get it on, Zoe's looking confident, and here's why. I used to play rugby for Leeds University ladies team, but now I've come back to Wales, I play for real ladies. I was quite lucky, at the end of this season, my first season with them, I got top try scorer for North Wales, which helps really when you score 11 tries in one game. So, I'm really looking forward to Powerball. Three, two, one! Let's go, Joe. Rebel. Oh, yanks her down. Ah, oh, but she bounces right back up again. Though he dispossessed, but disposed to reload, faces the Rebel. Oh, Rebel's in with a tackle. That won't count because Zoe was grounded. Joe back for another pickup. Long time since the detective pounded the beat. Zoe again. All oh, Rocket splashes her down with ease. Has someone got a torch? Thank you. And Siren gets Joe down. More used to a police siren than a gladiator. Zoe back for more, looking to place a blue in the basket. Rebel's there. Oh, serves up a solid takedown. Zoe tries for some more afters, but the ref won't swallow that. Two baskets, but zero points for Zoe. Joe with another red and another run. The Glad's looking to arrest her progress. She accompanies Siren and Rebel to the crash mat. Nil-nil with an around 15 seconds remaining. Joe working hard, but for little reward. Oh, intercepted again. This time Rocket makes her a target. Zoe mixing it with Rebel. Siren finishes it. Time running down. Looks like the Glad's have got the measure of the girls again. Joe in the dying seconds, back from all action. Oh, so is Rebel. John Anderson's hooter is the biggest one in the arena and clearly makes the biggest noise. And the Glads did so well. Rocket blasted Joe to the floor and out of the score. And despite all the rugby training, Zoe couldn't convert her skill into a point scoring situation. Oh, cop that. Mullard. So after three events, Joe stays on 13, Zoe on eight. Now we move on to the men's event. Scoring with the blue balls is Tony. And with the red balls is Andy. Then facing gladiators, Rhino, Warrior and Ace. Over to John Anderson. Contender! do with a score on the board, but Rhino's having none of it. Tony dancing his way past Ace, but Warrior's there to remind him it takes two to tango. Andy, back for another go. Here's Andy facing Ace. Ace bundles him away, the throw in vain from Andy. Tony at full stretch, shows his vest, escapes the Rhino and deposits one for two. Tony again with Ace out of position, good recovery by Ace. Warrior's there too. But Tony quick steps past Ace, but Warrior there again with military two-step precision. His motto, they shall not pass a doble. Thanks for the applause, Warrior. Andy back for another try. More than halfway through. Ace is there, won't be outflanked. And Rhino finding Tony a slippery eel. Warrior won't stand for any nonsense. Andy back to try again. Rhino charges him down. Andy's battered and bruised, but he won't give up. The ex-miner from Yorkshire is far from the pits. Full of courage and determination. Tony's back on the floor, but can't waltz round Warrior. Good work from the big fella. And it looks like the clock and the gladiators have beaten them. Only Tony managed to slip a pair past the fearsome threesome. There's the hooter. Congratulations all round. Tony managed to slam the brakes on, outmaneuver Rhino and stretch himself to the basket to deposit a pair of points. After three events, Andy nil, Tony 12. Back for some biking now with the glads. Come on, Wolf, keep up, mate. These mountain bikes are brilliant, aren't they? They've got all the latest equipment, anti-lock brakes, contoured saddles, lightweight frames, 40 your gears. Yeah, mine's even got somewhere to live. Hey, what are you talking about? Yours has got somewhere to live? Yep, somewhere to live. But where? I don't know. When I picked up the bike, the guy said to me, Hey, Wolfie, your bike's got a flat. 
<laughs> That's why he's not wearing a helmet. His head is hard as a rock. It's time now for our next event. Our first female contender is Jo! And she's doing battle with Falcon! Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! Right then, let's ready study the rap sheet on Detective Constable Joe. Comes from Birmingham, stands 172, weighs 64 kilos. Across the pugil platform will stand Falcon, two centimetres shorter, but three kilos heavier. Falcon's a law unto herself with a pugil stick, and Joe could do with a long arm of the law to increase her reach in this battle. Could it be that the policewoman's about to be sent down? More used to dishing out a crunching with a truncheon is Joe, but Falcon won't be banged up, and the copper comes a cropper. Falcon makes her join the flying squad. Instead of copping a whack, she's whacking a cop. Well, look at this blistering finish by Falcon. Swinging, hooking, jabbing, nudging, a huge offence which Joe couldn't get to grips with. Joe, for so long you were doing well, and then Falcon just caught you off balance? Yeah, you get to a point and you just can't hold on as much as you want to. <laughs> I never saw you at the beginning when you just stood there facing a gladiator. Uh, you're nervous, but there's so much going on. It's not the most overwhelming thought in your mind. You just want to get on and uh, do it. <laughs> well done. Let's hear it for Joe and Falcon! second female contender is Zoe and she's up against Rio over to John Anderson contender well up against Rio you wouldn't get me up there Rio had a T to her name, and you get riot, and she's having a riotous time up there. Zoe, the fitness instructor, being taught a thing or two, trying to soak up the punishment, but Rio persuades her otherwise. And it's gloves off time for Rio. Starts with a slap in the face, and then just kept piling on the pressure. Zoe does well to recover here, but the writing was on the wall, and the scores on the board. After four events, Joe remains on 13, and Zoe stays on eight. Now it's the turn of the boys. Our first male contender is Andy. And he's up against Calm. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! A former miner, Andy, great when it comes to a car. How will he cope with a Calm? Stands an impressive 185 while weighing a goodly 88 kilos. But will he can the Calm? Especially as the Gladiator has an 8 centimetre height advantage coupled with a 26 kilo weight difference. Oh, it's Andy first to the punch by a whisker, but incurs the wrath of Khan for his impudence. Sheer Khan brute force comes into play. Oh, Andy steps across. A win for the Khan. A disappointed Julie can't believe it. Khan eases Andy away from him, then somehow lures him back, and Andy takes the bait to step across. Second male contender is Tony. And he's facing the wolf. Over to John Anderson. Wolf in sheep's clothing, he's got a leotard on. And the wolf looking for revenge. What's Tony got going for him? Shapes up well, 177 tall and 79 weight wise, whereas the wolf is six centimeters taller and 16 kilos heavier, including that lady's headscarf. Tony gets to work and unbalances Wolf. Well, they say where there's no sense, there's no feeling, but Wolf taking a severe bashing on the bonds, and he's gone, and shows Tony a double whammy. Wolf appealing to the ref, but he certainly doesn't appeal to Tony's crowd, and I know John Anderson isn't happy about this. Wolf takes a battering, how embarrassing, but sticks one back as he goes, and it's enough to take Tony down. Absolutely incredible. You took the Wolf man out, no problem. I ain't scared of no big bad wolf. OK, uh, we're going to bring in John Anderson for a ruling. Yes, Jeremy, the situation is when both go off at more or less the same time in the same action, 
then we either have a draw or, in this case, a rematch. A rematch it is, then. Off we go. Let's confirm my suspicions. Wolf, off balance, dishes out the blow that finishes Tony and takes a flyer himself. Good call by the ref. The Nesbeth family are not about to agree with me, though. So we're back where we started. Rules are rules. Tony up and at it again, but Wolf's got the centre victory. Eat that! Dashes Tony to the deck in no time. And Wolf giving some stick instead of taking it. Tony's fans less than impressed. My sympathies are with you. The rematch didn't quite go as planned, did it? No. But at the end of the day, I know I've got him down. He's been down before, and I know I've taken him down. So. <laughs> The size difference was enormous, but, I mean, you still went at him. Yeah, well, he's human like everybody else, and he's there to take some good licks, and I was about to give him it, so... Let's bring in the Wolf. Uh, Wolf, I have to say, you're pretty lucky. You got a rematch. Hey, I wasn't lucky. We both came off at the same time, and you know it! <laughs> no way, he was in the air! I was in the air! <laughs> oh! Well, look at that! A little bit of afters there, but no point in it. Oh, and John Anderson. Canada! Canada! Stop it! Tough talk Stop from it. John Anderson. Knows how to give those naughty boys a real ticking off. As usual, it's just water off a wolf's back. Who is? And after four events, the glands prevent any progress, so Andy's on zero points. Tony stays on 12. Sing. Let's hear Joe talk about this next event. I only realised a couple of weeks ago that the object of the game in Hang Tough is actually to get across from the platform on one side to the platform on the opposite side. Um, my friend's kids lent me their videos and on it I saw a woman actually do it and I've never seen that before. So um, I'll definitely be going for the full ten points, so watch this space. Watch this space indeed because Lightning's a high flyer when it comes to hang tough. 100% ring record in competition. And Joe Newman's overcome some tough challenges in her career. They won't have involved hanging 30 feet in the air from a bunch of rings. Lightning goes for a strike, but can't hold it. Joe's in a spot of bother unless she can swing by. And she can. But Lightning's back to prime the trap again. Here she comes, locks up the detective. Can she send her down? She can. Lightning faultless and Joe scoreless. And Joe looks a bit winded. Lightning never lets them off the hook in this situation and always gets them off the rings. And poor old Joe felt that one. This wasn't going to be your thing. Were you, were you just winded there? or? Yes, she's supposed to be the lightest one. <laughs> She is, but we've decided to call you Frightening Lightning from now on. Oh, thank you very much, Ollie. You're all, <laughs> we're all friends together. No, I mean, you were just sort of double thinging and just frightening the life out of the poor girl. Well, the thing is, I double ringed on the way there and I thought, oh, this is going well. And all of a sudden, I overtook her and I thought, no, it's not going well now. But I hope you're feeling OK and you're not, you're not injured or hurt in any way. No, I don't think I just hit a bump. <laughs> well, hang on in there, girl. Let's hear it for Joe and for Lightning. Well, Ollie obviously not noticed we've been calling her Frightening Lightning for some years now. Next up, it's Zoe. She's going to be facing Vogue. of, might I say, beautiful Vogue sets off in pursuit of Zoe, whose fiancé is in the RAF, so Zoe's about to experience the kind of aerial combat that he's used to. Vogue eyeing up the situation, 
Though he's shaping to hang a left and stay out of harm's way. And Vogue looking to counter a move with a quick traverse. Great timing from Vogue. The right place at the right time to execute the lock-up. The legs are on. Now can she get the hands off? Zoe trying to hang tough, but Vogue sharp when it comes to the put-down. Vogue with time on her hands and Zoe on her legs. Oh, she's gone! Let those points slip through her fingers. Vogue the victor. Let's see it again. Once Vogue's got you trapped, it's either hang tough or admit that's enough. Vogue releases one of Zoe's hands, then the other, and it's all downhill from there, especially for Zoe. After five events, the scores are still the same. Joe 13, Zoe 8. So now we move into the men's event with Andy. He's going to be facing Hunter. The 18 carat golden gladiator, the king of all he surveys. His skill and his popularity just continue to grow and grow. Over to John Anderson. Andy has shown a great sportsman-like spirit tonight, but how unlucky can you get drawing the hunter on Hang Tough? Andy can only hope for the best, but he can expect the worst. Andy wide, while Hunter straight down the middle, he'll come across with ease for the intercept. There go the legs, and Andy bravely trying to shake them off, and Hunter's not best place for a takedown. Good defense from Andy, but Hunter will be back. Here he comes. Oh, legs up, strap is on. Will the contender come down? He will! Hunter with not a hint of weakness in his entire body rolls him over and Andy still comes up smiling. What a great guy. His brother Mark in the middle and nephew Elliot found it a bit of a nail-biter. Andy, I was a little concerned that things might turn a little nasty then. But... Oh, it's all under control, don't worry. Well, you, you're smiling. I'm all smiling. No points. And, um, Hunter, if you could just let us into your little world of Beatrix Potter and tell us... What animal uh, were you this time? I wasn't an animal that, that time. I felt a bit like a football, actually. Oh. You know, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw quite a bit of the sole of his shoe, but uh, a good game. I think we could dress you up as a badger, you know. Less of your private thoughts. <laughs> Let's hear it for Hunter and for Andy. I'd always thought of Ollie as Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Andy's mum leading the applause. The superb Saracen, one of the greatest and one of the longest serving gladiators. Does Tony reckon he's got his work cut out here? Any top, I can hang like this all day. Always ready. That's our Sarah. Tony says he can hang tough all day, but he only needs to manage 60 seconds in the scoring zone to clock up five points. Ten if he makes it across to Sarah's platform. Saracen, still a full-time firefighter. A hero, whatever he does. Here he comes. Dancer Tony with a quick knees up. Saracen swings back for a second assault, and Tony heads for the wings to get out of trouble. Saracen weighs up the situation. Tony well in the scoring zone. Just over half a minute left, and Tony with space. Saracen caught a bit square, needs to reposition. Tony's going to try for the platform, can't control the swing. Brother and sister Darren and Angela can hardly bear to watch. Saracen swings in to mark Tony out, tangles him up and grabs a leg. Tony's got to escape before the scissors snap on. Saracen there. Oh, this won't last. Tony's used to getting down, but only on the dockers floor. Good, solid performance from Saracen. There was a premature grab. I saw him and I got a bit greedy and I aimed for him a bit too easy. But have you noticed? He's not wearing any gloves. Can you imagine? Oh, should he be? That is a strong boy. I mean, those rings are hard up there. And he was up there with no gloves. He even held me up there for a few seconds before I let go. This is one strong boy. Tony, I want to hear what you had to say to Sarah when he was holding on to you. I was saying, come on, pull me down, pull me down, be strong. Oh. But I've got something for Saracen. I want to see if he could do this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yes! Come on! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Let's hear it for Sarah. You see this? Oh, this is the man. Oh, this is the man. Woo! Slot. He gave me a run for my money. 
praise indeed from the big fella. Another clean cheek from the Glads means the scores stay the same. Andy 0, Tony 12 after five events. Well, all that stands between our contenders and a place in the quarterfinals is the Eliminator. So join us after the break for more action here on Gladiators. Eliminator time. At stake is a place in the quarterfinals. But first, let's have a look at the scores. Joe is on 13 points. Zoe's on eight points. That's a five-point difference, giving Joe a two and a half second head start. Joe, you will go on my first whistle. Zoe, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two. One. Joe Newman sets off in pursuit of a place in the quarterfinal. And Zoe Kennedy sets off in pursuit of Joe. The highs and lows will set them up for the grueling elements ahead on this new Eliminator course. Joe first to the trampette, which brings her onto the cargo net. Zoe follows her up. She teaches fitness, so she's well disposed to put in a quick time. Looks to be gaining on Joe. Joe with a leg over the top and down the other side, and Zoe's on terms already. Beyonce, Chris and her training partner, Martin, both know that Zoe's capable of victory. A nightmare net for Joe as Zoe hits the rope first. Zoe struggling on the rope and Joe Ferry not much better. Zoe first to the platform. Only the strong survive on Gladiators, but these girls have got strength by a bucket full. Two contrasting techniques on the ladder. Joe two rungs at a time and Zoe only one. And Zoe will benefit from that as she touches down first. Joe just behind, but Joe takes the trapeze first. Swings for the changeover. Joe leads, but Zoe's coming back again. Who's going to profit from the net? The agonizing climb to the top takes no prisoners. Joe's supporters cheer Joe on, and it looks to be working. Joe with a much more positive climb. Hits the gantry first and regains a lead. Ahead of them both, the zip line, the seesaws, then the diabolical travelator. Martin, Joe's corner partner, giving her and us an earful. Zoe hits the gantry while Joe zips down the line. Splash down. The end is in sight, but so Zoe. Oh, good landing from Zoe. Remember, it's not over until Ulrika sings. These next moments are critical. Joe on the balancing seesaw tackles it calmly. Zoe making great strides up. Next, it tips down. Joe making heavy weather of the second seesaw. Zoe gaining again. Next, a travelator. Joe's people know she can do it. Here she comes. The Birmingham DC gets the case back, reaches the top, and claims the reward. A place in the quarterfinals. And Graham pleased with that, celebrates by lifting his friend's son Adam onto his shoulders, but the weight off Zoe's shoulders, a valiant effort. Well, you certainly did. More Flanders, eat your heart out. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you must be feeling absolutely amazing. It feels good, especially when you're in your hometown. That's nice. And you've had the crowd behind you. They've been fantastic and they've been very excited for you. Brilliant. And you get this very special necklace, Ooh, which I know you'll keep and treasure. Go see your fans. Let's hear it for Joe. Well done. We call them medals in the trade, Elite. Sorry, that was so desperately close. Hello, there. I tried my hardest. I did it for my fans. Thank you so much. Have you enjoyed your time on Gladiators? I've had a wonderful time. Thank you for the experience. Thanks so much. We've enjoyed having you. Let's hear it for Zoe. Oh, yes, a great effort from Zoe. Did her fitness pupils and her fans proud. Mum and Dad leading the applause. Joe with flowers in one hand and Graham in the other. The record for the fastest eliminator this season is held by Paula Bush. And as you can see, that record remains intact. Now we turn to the boys. The final scores being 12-0 to Tony, so he starts the eliminator with a six-second advantage. Back downstairs. So, um, you haven't picked up any points tonight? No, unfortunately not, but it's, this is the eliminator. No, what can happen on this game? You're still smiling, that's good to see. And you must be feeling very secure in knowing that you've got a six-second head start, Tony. Yeah, but I also know that the eliminator is the ultimate challenge, and I know he's going to be right behind me. Well, listen, I'll be waiting for you both at the end. Won't that be your joy? Best of luck for the two of you. Good luck. They've been cheering all night and they've still got plenty of voice, except for those three. Anthony, you will go on my first whistle. Andrew, you will go on my second whistle. 
three, two, Dancer Tony one. Nesbeth sets off to trip the light fantastic round this eliminator course. Those six seconds mean he should reach the cargo net before Andy gets the whistle. Here comes Andy and the chase is on. Smoothly over and under the beams. And Tony smoothly at the top of the net. Oh, throws himself over the top, finishes with the net as Andy joins it. Rope climb should be easy for Tony, but he's taking nothing for granted. He eats himself up. And his daughter Chloe expending as much energy as her dad makes short work of the rope as Tony pedals that bike superbly, almost as tough as the Tour de France. But here's a Tour de Force, and his hands are blur on that bike, looking to eat into that lead. Tony there, the dancer, knows how to swing. Tony's family and friends are on their feet. Darren wiping his nose as Tony scales the net. Andy off the trapeze, the gap beginning to yawn again. Tony at the top, but no time to admire the view. Andy climbing strongly. On the zip, aiming for the black crash match. Oh, good landing. Andy's on the zip now, racing to the arena floor. Tony's online for the seesaws. Up he comes. Very fast foot there. On to the next one. Desperate to keep his balance. Andy on his first seesaw. Oh, he's blown it. Well, he's still clapping, but Julie can't believe it. Tony can. That six-second head start made a world of difference into the quarterfinals. His mum and dad, Sylvia and Ozzy, start the celebrations. That's right. Ozzy gives it plenty. Andy completes his seesaw. And the Travelator. Go on, my son. Up you go. What a great performer. He's there. He acknowledges the crowd and his daughter. My daddy's a winner. Tony, I had a feeling tonight was going to be your night. Did you? I did it. I just went full out and I had the six second head start, so that was my advantage. But he's a brilliant contender and I wish him the best of luck. All during tonight, though, you, you've competed with a smile on your face. You seem as though you really enjoyed yourself. I did. This is the ultimate challenge. This is. Well, you'd be pleased to know you've made it through to the quarterfinals. Let's hear it for Tony! Very, very best, but at the end of the day, it was the six seconds head start. Yeah, it was something to catch up. I gave me almost. Thought I might pick up a pod car, but it kept going. Good luck to me the rest of the round. Cheers, Anthony. Well, a special thank you to all my fans. Thank you very much, everybody. Let's hear it for Andy. Well done. Well done indeed. The guys with more than enough energy to rush to their families. Tony and Ozzy there. Andy, the pride and the passion, and a big pair of arms to welcome them home. And that victory by Tony also lands him the season's eliminator record, beating Ali Graham's time by 10 clear seconds. Well done, Tony. See you in the quarters. Well, that really was a fantastic eliminator. Very exciting indeed. It certainly was. I, I can't really take much more of this. Well, you have to. You have to come back next week, and so do you. Join us next week for more action here on Gladiators. Good night. Good night. One episode of Gladiators is, is never enough, really, is it? No. So... How about in a few moments we'll bring you another one? Yeah, that's here on Challenge. Well, over on Pick Next, they're defending Australia's borders. It's nothing to declare. <laughs>